previously on Chilling. Give them an opportunity to open up to you, you know, ask the question mm. and be a listener on the first place. And among those questions, you think she won't be asking how much do you get paid? Because you're in control, the one who asks the question drives the conversation and drives the relationship. If you let her ask the questions, then you're showing her you're not a real man. You, you won't even be able to drive the relationship where yeah. it is supposed to go. Chilling. Good evening once again and welcome to the most viewed show in the entire country and this is Chilling. My name is Rago. Now, they say a photographer's life can be very rich if pursued well. Now, some of them even go ahead to say it's more than just a career, it's a lifestyle. Now, tonight, me and my guest, who has been here with me since last week, we're going to take you behind the lens with some of the unprecedented access to some of the Ugandan celebrities and the icons of Uganda. So, Mr. Tege, yes. let me start with your bio. It says that photography is like a, a calling and a purpose that you strive every day to become better in. Is yes, that yes. even true? Yes, uh, growth is my motivation. Mm. Um, I'm, I don't look at... Uh, other photographers I don't look at other artists but I look at me mm. you know the only competition I have is me so I strive to be better at my that's the thing that's day. I think yes, everything yes, yes. everybody that pursues a career in show business definitely. should consider that as a motive yes, like definitely. as a drive because yes, even me too when I do an interview or when I do maybe a certain project I always want to uh, assume to be much better than yes, uh, that's definitely. why I don't even want to look at my work <laughs> once it's done airing I'll be I like because nah, 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 I'll start looking out for mistakes definitely. and then I want to do much better true, true, true. so um his photography always been your your thing growing up or you just picked it as a career? Uh, honestly, I call myself a visual artist. Mm. When people ask me, what are you? I say I'm a visual artist, I'm an artist. Mm. You know, photography, I, I, I did, a, a, in school I did a more of a fine art. You know, the things I do, I paint. Mm. O originally, I was so much of a painter. You know, Ooh, this wow. painting and uh, all that. So, like with your hands? Yes, with my hands. Yeah. So as, uh, as I grew into my career, went, went to art school and all that, I majored into photography because I, I felt painting, I can even do that home. Do you, you know, know? Uh, a guy called Prince Andrew? Uh, yes, I know Chris Andre. Andre. I, know I Chris had Andre. him on the show. Wow, that's yeah, nice. That I, I, guy would I was so, the yeah. portraits in yeah. Benso and Chaco. Yeah. Oh I, God, I, I was very, so very fascinated with so his work. Can, very, can very you good. do something like what he does? I, 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 I can do that, but uh, I'm so much into oil painting mm. than uh, the actual this the pencil work. I do more of uh, oil painting mm. and all that than uh, the medium. No, I can do that as well. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people describe you with a lot of names. But we as journalists, as yes, I told yes. you, because of the moniker, we always want to put a, a tag. We always want to put a label on you. Because yes. some even call you a filmmaker. Yes. Others call you a fine artist. Uh, others call you a photographer like me. Because yes, most yes, of yes. your work I've seen is through photography. True, true. So, wh wh why why don't you stick to one particular thing? Uh, basically, we as people, when, when, when I was uh, beginning to do, to build the brand, Oscar Ntege, I asked myself, who, what do I want to be? Because we as humans evolve, mm. you know? At first, most people knew me as a wedding photographer, you know? Later on, I became just a photographer. Is it your specialty, weddings? I, I used to do weddings back then. Trust me, I revolutionized Uganda's wedding photography. Because uh, I came in the... Whoa, uh, that, that's a photograph. big statement right there. Yes, I did. <laughs> a lot of people are going to quote you by that. Because they know, mm. they, they know the truth. I did this. Um, uh, when, when I came into the wedding photography industry, that is back in 2007, there was this traditional way of uh, doing pictures of Omgolo uh, Mchala Kukono, and, you know, pictures that wouldn't Wait, speak. Wait, yeah, I'm but sorry. When, when, when I came in... Mm. Uh, I remember this couple, it was a young couple. I took that couple through orientation for over a week. I told, I told them, we're going to do a pictures doing this and this and this and this. And uh, this, this, this couple was like, okay, go do your, come do your thing. So I make, I, the first time I shot this bride flying up in air and uh, doing all this kind of crazy, crazy stuff. I have the bride carrying the groom instead of the groom. <laughs> Odd, odd stuff. I post these pictures on Facebook. I remember my Facebook page back then had 1,000 likes. But the day I post, the month I posted uh, those pictures, my page actually organically Speaking of it likes, rose from 1,000 followers something to 10,000 followers in one month after what? I posted those pictures. And fellow photographers were criticizing me. 
They were telling me, one first of all, your pictures have a lot of color, but the clients love them. Exactly, that's what I was you know? going to ask. They you ask, pay too much attention yes. to color and in-depth. And uh, they told me, how would you make certain people like ministers do these things? The next wedding, they see, they see a, an MP somewhere jumping up in air. They see a major general, somebody jumping up in air, and they're like, how did you make him do this? They see this doctor who is a leader there, doing certain things on camera and they're like, how did you make him even do this? How, how do you, let, let me also ask you, before, they, <laughs> how do you get them that comfortable? How do they, how do you get them to bend towards like, your direction? Like I say, how? photography is photography. Photography is not a technical thing. Photography is an emotion. As photographers, we speak into souls of people. It is not the lighting, it's not uh, what camera you use, it's not the real So some of the have. people that are on your clientele yes, or yes, want yes. to work with you, yes. at least they have to have seen your work somewhere. Yes, to yes, get yes. Uh, To get in, because I wonder, like you're getting grown people jumping in the air and, mm -hmm. and being comfortable yes, doing yes, it. Because yes, yes, yes. you can't actually show the discomfort on camera, right? Definitely, you can't. And you're almost, I don't know, six feet up. I mean, it, it all comes back to how you relate to them here. Hmm. You know, if, if a person goes to my page and sees the pictures that are on my page, they feel my pictures are speaking. Even if it's a headshot, hmm. even if there are fingers holding one another, you know, it's not a matter of uh, getting people and posing them together. Because hmm. when you get, say, a couple and pose them and shoot them, you're shooting a pose. Hmm. But if, if it's a nice pose and there is emotion and laughter or sadness, whatever emotion you want to portray, then you've done a picture. Now, since a lot of my viewers and I myself can believe that you're an extremely talented brother, uh, did you study photography or is it something that's self-made? Uh, no, uh, I, I would say we are all self-made. It's only the successful ones that would admit it, that where we are. <laughs> did you go to school? Yes. for this kind of job? Yes, I went to school, I did uh, industrial fine art, mm -hmm. but uh, what they teach in school, they teach the technical mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. These are the things you can't get in school, like uh, talking to people, uh, relating with, uh, with certain people, character building and all that. Mm -hmm. All those you can't get in school. School teaches you the technical aspects, mm -hmm. then the rest is for you to figure out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So, uh, at what age did you discover that you had the talent of photos or um, photography? That, 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 uh, I, would, I would say the question would have been at what age did you discover that you are a visual artist? From way back from primary school. I, I remember us drawing uh, comical illustrations in mm. books mm. where you draw the whole movie of John Rambo. I remember those were the days of ninjas, American ninja, what? Oh. And we used to draw the whole movie. In illustration, so getting, in, that stuff. So getting yeah. introduced to a camera it came later on. <laughs> yes, it came later on. Now, came I, understand. At now I understand. Uh, where you had to choose a course unit, oh. you know, out of the many course units uh, okay. the art school offered. Right. So that's when I got into the actual thing of photography. So at school, you did what? I did, uh, I did industrial fine art as a course. And uh, when uh, I majored in uh, into graphics design or communications design, then mm. uh, painting mm. and uh, photography. Those are the three course units I did. Mm. Yes, to, to make the whole... Uh, do you feel like some of your work is more of a technique, more than a creativity? Uh, my, my work is more of uh, psychology and creativity. I can't even describe that. What does that even mean? Uh, now, so when I say psychology, psychology is uh, when somebody looks at an image, it has to make him feel something. You some know, type of way. Some type of way. If your image is more of the technical thing. Mm. That's why you will see photographers talk about eh, akapana inka nukaina light ya mulunji. But it will have little likes on Facebook. And I'll have mine that is even somehow blurry of uh, a, a mother laughing out loud with a child. Just an ordinary picture. But because it feels, a mother feels something, a mother will double tap on my Instagram too, mm. like a picture. That's why I say my technique is much more of emotion. Even if I have great lighting on you, for as long as the image doesn't make me feel a thing when I look at it as 
I, I actually I don't look at myself as a photographer when I'm shooting. Mm. You know, I look at myself as a person who is going to see this picture. How would I want to feel? Mm. You know, the most interesting thing I would I want I would love to find out is how did you transition from that amateur student yes. that used to do visual art yes. uh, to a professional level now where you get to interact with all these big icons. Now, now um, uh, me 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 coming. Uh, I remember I first worked in for a studio. Mm. I first worked in for for a studio. There was a studio used to be called African Images. Mm. Back then it was. Uh, one of the big studios is one of the top three studios because back then we had Megapix, Dodico, and African Images. Those were the top three studios. I had a chance of talking of uh, being taken through apprenticeship with by this guy called Kibi, mm. yeah, Kibi Hassan. He took me through all these technical things of how photography is, of how the whole thing begins. But later on, as just came on, I did who, my who own is business. that? You just... Kibi Rango Hassan. Mm. Kibi Hassan. Is he also uh, into the same business? He's he used to be in the same is business. Is he your mentor? Uh, yes, he's my mentor, definitely. And uh, what, what, what I would have to say is uh, most of the times is uh, he took me through the technical aspects and uh, you know learning photography, how the photography business runs and all that. Mm. Later on, uh, that is in late 2009, I did my own studio, which failed totally to zero. <laughs> By 2012, I, I didn't have a studio 2011 mm. actually it lasted for just one and a half years what happened you oh couldn't God. support it's, it it's financially really a long story mm. but it fell so i went back to zero i lost everything cameras to everything and uh, what happened they stole the equipment no no no, what no, happened? no. i was in a partnership with somebody ah, and yes you broke off you know with somebody. So, so we broke ah. off and i lost so everything. you start you had to start from scratch i started from scratch basically to this huge giant brand Ntege Oscar. now mm. during my actually it was good that that thing happened because during my depression it's when i met a guy called steve jean steve jean uh, owns fenon the yeah, biggest steve. events company steve. yeah, yeah. Uh, now i meet steve this guy, Michael, told me what the meaning of branding is. I remember the, the first chat I had with him. He told me, you have very good work. You should be making a lot of money. And trust me... And this was the time you're still with that pattern of yours? No, no, no. I had, we had cut off. Mm. That is after I had gone back to zero. It's the time I met Steve Jean. To zero. And I remember he gave me my first jig. Mm. And the first jig... I, I bought my very first computer, <laughs> you know, my first computer after. Do you still have that computer? I still have that computer. Wait, it, it's stored <laughs> somewhere in the archive or you still use it? Some, I, I, in, fact, in fact, I still use it. Okay. I still use it up to today. That, that is actually 2012. Which computer I, was that? It was a Dell, I remember, Pentium something. Those were days of Pentium. <laughs> and this is not a long time ago, by the way. It's not a long time ago, hmm. but trust me, in the next year, I made 200 million Ugandan Wait shillings. Wait a minute, that really? Year. Yes, because I wow. shot over 92 weddings to be exact. What? So just know I've shot every kind of wedding up. Like if you're to talk about wedding photography, you may even spend a night, but as a creative person, you evolve. You know, you get bored over something. Like Da Vinci said, if you get bored over something, change. Here again, he's coaching again, else. he's coaching <laughs> again. So guys, as you notice now, this spot has started off with a different vibe. It is uh, taking a totally different direction and we're burning with a different type of petrol. So we're gonna return shortly. So it's gonna be interesting, man. <laughs> Chilling. Now, I'm still with a renowned photographer and multiple award winner. I'm still asking him a lot of questions to do with photography. So, if you're interested in knowing mostly to do with photography, please stay on. So, uh, Mr. Oscar, tell me, um, it's, it's so interesting how at such a young age, yes. you're being able to, 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 to single-handedly, okay, with a couple of other guys yes, to, yes. to hold this company and, and revive it and keep it functional. Yes. How, how does that happen? How do you keep your company fun functional? Um, what, what happens to certain times when maybe there's no work? Um, um, I, I've, I've not experienced really such times when there is no work. Ooh, there, there, there is, is that busy, work. guys? Is that uh, busy? There is always work. Mm. Why? Um, uh, photographers are creative artists. Mm. Me calling uh, on uh, Irene Tali and I tell her, or oh, Ella, and tell her, you know, I have this concept I would really want us to shoot, and I feel you would match this actual concept. Why don't you fund it and we shoot it? You know, you don't need to wait for clients to come to you. Call them, mm. you know, 
sometimes they don't know that they need these services unless you tell them mm. you know for oh. example there is a project i want to do with uh, with the government of uganda well i don't want to say people will take the idea but uh, you create mm. the jobs mm. you know when you become a creator other than now that's where i ruled out the competition mm. thing mm. My, my 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 job as a creative is being more of a, a creator other than a competitor mm. i create mm. You know, I now, don't compete. Mm, now, Mr. Tege, they yes. say that photography is more like a jealous, uh, a selfish lover or yes. a jealous lover. Once you go into that field, I mean, you don't have time to do any other thing. Yes. Uh, are you always in the studio working or are you somewhere or uh, taking adventures or uh, events, taking photos? I mean, what do you even do in your free time? Uh, honestly, free, free, free. My free time, you'll be surprised I paint. That, that, that is uh, how I spend my free time or really but most of the times the photography thing you know it's like uh, a demon that wears you that gets mm. into your possesses mm. you and uh, you get all buried into cameras but we also have a life outside really mm. the camera mm. but mostly so much about road trips mm. where you just get a car and drive and just go tell me about these uh youtube tutorial videos of yours and yes. about your workshops that you always come up with what, what, what's the drive what's the motive uh, um, what, what is made uh, you come now, up with now, all that? What, what made me come up with this you know i started an organization called um, clicks on hope we, it was it is uh, a, an organization that uh, uh, brings all photographers together. It doesn't matter whether you're a photojournalist or doing glamour or landscape or what. Is it a registered organization? It is registered actually. It is wow. called Picks of Hope. And uh, we have over a hundred photographers as members. We have fashion designers, we have graphics designers, we have uh, filmmakers, we have makeup artists. Mm. And uh, one of the goals of Clicks of Hope was uh, to help photographers yeah, get better at their craft. New photographers or all the ones photographers, even... mm. All photographers. Now, where you do organize workshops, maybe you organize the workshop on marketing mm. and they learn marketing. Mm. Well, you've organized the workshop on uh, retouching and they come in for retouching. It's bettering the photography industry. Mm. Imagine we are, we are in a photography industry that can generate over two billion shillings per year. Mm. It is uh, Clicks of Hope basically was to add value into the photography industry as the photography industry. So these or oh, this enormous amount of cash, does it go to the GDP or...? Um, 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 uh, basically, some, some, some of the money partly goes into 10% of all the earnings I get mm. from Oscar Tege. Goes to revenue. Company, mm. goes to clicks of hope to give back to the community. Because uh, beyond teaching photographers only, we also go into communities. You meet somebody who, who, are, who can't afford a picture, Dress them up, get a good fashion designer, or get a big fashion designer like Raphael, mm. you know, or get a big makeup artist like Mona or Faith Presh and uh, they do face bits on them, and then you do a nice... So who's uh, the driving stars of, of that them. foundation? You're the one? Yes, I, I, I would drive this foundation. Okay, yes. so uh, you have this coalition with some other, the rest of photographers? Yes, we, we, we have this many photographers because we they come into the organization mm. for the sake of giving mm. because these pictures we don't even use these pictures for our portfolios mm. not even our website so mm. but we give from the deepest part of giving mm. for the sake of giving so one would say with all what you've accomplished yes. so far one would say you're content are you contented with what you've achieved uh, so far uh, yes because at the end of the day when this life is over. Mm. People will never talk about how great my work is. No, no, no. The people, people will talk about my contribution to the world. Mm. How did I make a world a better place? Mm. How can I make a world a better place using my craft? Mm. You know, I think that's what the world would look at. When you know, I had, I had, I had all these billion questions to ask you, but it always kills me when they say we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, listen. Uh, you should keep on doing whatever you're doing. Listen, I, I think you're, you're doing an incredible job. Uh, phot photography is much more of a storytelling thing. Yes, yes, yes. It's just not about commerce or it's too commercialized or something like that. So uh, we are going to take a little break and then we return back with our spot of music, which is our music segment. Uh, we are going to talk about, uh, pay a tribute to a special somebody that Oscar has worked with <laughs> before. Shilling. 
very young and extremely talented photographer, Mr. Antege Oscar. He is an award winner uh, for Asfers 2017, right? Yes. And yes, some yes. other awards that I didn't mention. I Which some other awards? Um, uh, there is a Uganda Photo Press Award. Mm. There is a Social Media Award. Mm. Really, there are quite a number. Okay, now before we go into our video segment, just yes. one little thing. Uh, to a young beginner who has had their first camera, just like this, and they are wanting to start up something like like whatever you're doing, what's the best advice you can give him? The best advice? Mm. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. <laughs> yes. It all comes from life. Like passion. Mm. If you're coming in it for the money, mm. then it won't work for you. I'm sorry, there is no money. Okay. But if it is passion, you're in the right track. That's a good advice. Yes, now, uh, for a couple of weeks ago, we had the most shocking news when we had that one of the dynamic, uh, one of the members, sorry, one of the members of the Good Life died eventually so um today me and the guys you say they say better late than never so me and the guys decided to pay a little bit of tribute to talk about one of his music videos so uh mr Antege, what why what, because what, you worked with 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 uh yes, with radio yes, yes. and you almost spent an hour with him yes yes i mean are you familiar with his music videos yes yes I'm what familiar. has been your best so far uh, honestly there is uh, one video it is rarely played, but it's called. Uh, he does it. With, he did it with. Uh, it has, I think, GNL. Mm. It is called Machozi Machoni. Machozi Machoni. I am missing you, my baby. Machozi Machoni. Machoni. There is the lighting is epic and the video I'm, I'm sorry I'm going into the technical things now but the lighting is epic the mood baby can you see sweet lady we were meant to be to be you are me making baby you are me Cinematography was done uh, by uh, Kim XP. I think Kim XP was trending really there. Uh, there is GNL. GNL is putting on a Batman kind of cape and uh, it has that uh, kind of halo around. I watched around. that video before. Hey, yeah. Uh. Hey, uh. Uh -huh. The, 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 the visuals were epic. Very. Wow. It's a black and white video, but... I'm going to tell you my favorite. Uh -huh. My favorite is bread and butter. Bread and butter? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I, I, I like, of course, okay, it's not Is much of the video, the video, but the, the song, the song has a lot of memories <laughs> oh, for me. Oh, for me, video, video, I think, bread and butter, of course. But even GNL, uh, GNL's number was yes, there. Yes, GNL was there. But uh, what I love about Machozi is uh, the crescent lighting. It has uh, that kind of halo, the follow spot. Mm. Yeah, they use because follow spots, follow spots were rare mm. in this. And the fact that this cinematographer dared mm. to do it in black and white, okay. that, that that is uh, something that is rare mm. for music for musicians here today. Uh, juicy, juicy. Have you looked at that video? Juicy, 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 you are juicy, 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 Yes, More than once? Yes. Man, that was great. Uh, wow. This, this is, is beautiful uh, in terms of coloring. It's more glamour and uh, likes a happy feel. But uh, if go, go to a video called uh, Ruachitokura, it was done by Badi. Look at a video like that and look at the cinematic. Are you writing. talking about? Okay, these are not the why? most popular videos. Yes, I don't know why. Popular videos, but uh, internationally, mm. if you're to look at uh, content, mood, lighting, mm. these guys told a story in lighting, using light. Look at Mexican movies. You don't understand the language. Have you ever watched a movie that you don't understand the language? But in the way you understand, mm. what do you think makes you understand what is going on? It is the lighting, my brother. Mm. 
Wow, so why do you think uh, Radio always got a golden seat? Why, wh what made him so special that even at, at this level they call him a legend? I, I think it's uh, the, 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 the lazy, not lazy in a bad way, the lazy, effortless, uh, lyrical content. Mm. Like, uh, he doesn't seem to overly think of the lyrics and it becomes a bit so, you know, I, I would call him uh, the Van Gogh, the Van Gogh of uh, lyrics, mm. you know, he's, uh, he's that kind, I mean. No. Okay, uh, R.I.P. to radio and uh, we pray for his Maybe fellow uh, rest in peace. his fellow comrade, a weasel, to always maybe uh, sit down and reflect to about how the past has worked for them and to move on because yeah. it will be very 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 hard for him to recover from that so uh, we are done with the video segment and now we are going to uh, surprise our guests with a uh, present and uh, okay. somebody's yeah we have a present <laughs> man <laughs> look at him is that your surprise face <laughs> chilling Okay, I it just <laughs> flew from the air. <laughs> Mr. Chege, I want you to check what is in there and oh display it in God. front of the camera and appreciate it. Oh my god. Okay, now this uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. I know you will like it. Whoa. Yeah. It's an African piece of I a, love a necklace. It so much. The eagle. Yeah, the eagle. Maybe you're flying just um, like the eagle. <laughs> the eagles don't fly like falcons. So this, this okay. young man right here is an eagle. <laughs> I would la this, this, this game is <laughs> <laughs> You can put it on any time. Oh my god, thank you. You can put so it on any time. So um I love it. I remember I have a friend of mine called Chumba Martin. He had uh, a necklace like this. What? And I asked Please keep that thing to me. He said, no, I can't give it to you. It was a gift. Oh my God. This is a souvenir. Keep it oh at all God. times. And Thank every time so I much. want to see you outside no, there I, doing I, I, magnificent things. I'm going to things. be wearing this Exactly. Every day. Otherwise, I'll be holding you again. <laughs> onto thank that. Thank you so much. I'm Listen, thank you very much for being with me. I'm and really, thank really you for considering your time to come and chill with me. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Listen, anytime I need you back, I think I'll call you. Definitely. <laughs> I have to be back here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we much. have had great time. You have shared your stories and you have inspired our very many youths outside there. Oh, thank so uh, thank you very much, guys, for being a very nice audience. I would love to thank my team, Herbert. I would love to thank Henry and I thank Tony Iga. And uh, I also love to thank Tony Waldiaba. So uh, also my fashion designer, Quasi Classic, is found at Wonder Gap. You can go and uh, find some cool and nice clothes and always, always you will stand out. Trust me, guys. So I'm um, being Drago and this has been chilling. We're calling it a wrap. Bye bye, guys. And take care. See you next week with another guest. Next week on Chilling. That why you started is very important. You need to like remember why am I doing this? Why did I start to do this? Where am I going? So you need to have your vision. You need to know what you want. That's what's going to keep you pushing, you know? Even when you get discouragement, you think about, oh, in five years I could be this, or this could go here. So you need to stay, of course, you need to stay motivated. And um, also you need to keep people around you that are pushing you in that direction. Hi chillers, as you enjoyed this episode, make it an effort to follow our social media outlets. All you've got to do is type in Chilling UBC TV, like us on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and then also subscribe onto our YouTube channel.